because uh, time is of essence and all that. Um, so we had the privilege of going to Fort Ventura for a holiday um, a few weeks ago. We had a couple of weeks to use up from work. And uh, we thank God for the privilege to go and to have the time of refreshment. Um, as you all know, I'm called to do the work of an evangelist. I don't say that big-headedly because I know it's God's calling on my life. And every opportunity I get, I will share the gospel. So when we go away, which we do quite frequently, whether it's a little two days break here and there, or on our big voyages, which we've had the privilege to do over the last few years, uh, I always take tracks with me. Well, I take tracks with me wherever I go. Um, and I never miss the opportunity to see a soul removed from darkness into light. Amen. And I pray over the tracks, like these little bits of paper here, you know. I pray over them, and I ask God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to reveal to me the ripe fruit, which Hazel Hill has spoke to us many time about. The ripe fruit is people whose hearts are ready to receive the word of God. And she spoke very powerfully some years ago about the green fruit and the ripe fruit. And years ago, when I knew that God called me to do the work of an evangelist, um, I used to try and preach to everybody or convert them all. I remember when w down on our road, it's a cul-de-sac, and there was another Christian lady, and I said, Irene, we've got to take Daisy Bank for the Lord. And she said, Lizzie, relationship first, then we'll throw the seeds in. So to cut a long story short, um, uh, I, nothing gives me more joy than sharing the gospel with people. Nothing gives this, this fountain of joy rises up in me when somebody receives Christ. And I know from my own testimony how God can totally restore broken people. And not only restore them, but propel them forward to give the people hope and a future in him. And even though life throws a lot of things at all of us, nothing will stop me sharing the gospel. You know, we have things in all of our families that are cause, can cause and do cause us pain and waiting for answer to prayer. But in the meantime, time is short before the Lord returns. We're in the last days now. The harvest is ripe. The labourers are few. It's white unto harvest and the labourers are few. And my heart isn't to sit here and have a nice time, which is great. It's to go out wherever we go. So our mission field is everywhere we go. And, you know, sometimes we look at people's behaviour and think, what on earth is all that about? But really, a lot of it is the brokenness and the hurt inside. And only Jesus can totally heal, restore and... and bring that person to the person that he always created them to be. So getting back to the story, please forgive me. Um, so when we were getting the cases ready, well, you know, uh, I was ironing all Steve's lovely shirts and my things to go away. And I pray over, I get the tracks and I pray over the tracks. And I say, Lord, yes, it's a n nice time to go away, sit in the sun and go on all these lovely boat trips and everything. But really, there's souls out there. You know, and everybody, I mean, it is a privilege to go to these countries and everything. We had the privilege to go to many countries last year. I think God's preparing me for the mission field, really, by <laughs> in, in a roundabout way. So I uh, pray over the tracks. And I ask God, as I say, to, to reveal to me the person uh, or the persons um, that, you know, he lays on my heart, and I'm, I just sense that the, they're open to the word of God and that, that they will come to salvation. Um, because Jesus, as we know, came that all should come to the knowledge of him and that none should perish, and that we are his vessels. I know I'm his ambassador. I don't say these things big-headedly. I know because I know. Because my own journey, when you know who you are in Christ, it doesn't really matter what other people think. We're not here to please people, we're here to please God. So on the second night, we have it. We, the hotel was very close to the town. And, you know, beautiful weather, flimsy clothes, light nights, sunshine and all that. And as we were walking down the main street, I was asking the Lord, you know, they, they're all trying to get you into their restaurants and all that sort of thing. And it's all very pleasant in the flesh, you know. 
And then I thought, God, you know, there's, there's, there's going to be someone here. So anyway, on the corner of this road, there was this guy, and he was giving out leaflets for, to go to this bar or this club. And as it happened, Steve had a dental problem, and we needed a dentist. And I says to him, I said, do you live here? He was a, a, a Londoner, and he says, yeah. I said, do you know of a good dentist? Because my husband needs a dentist. He just told us where it was. And we got chatting like we do, you know. I can gossip the gospel, praise God. I don't, I don't like to hear gossip about people, but I like to gossip the gospel. Anyway, I was in the shower, and I was praying to God, and I really felt that, you know, he, he shared a couple of things, that he'd gone from London to Australia, and that he'd ended up in Fort Ventura. And I was praying to God in the shower, and I was asking God, God, maybe this is the person that you want to connect. Anyway, the next night, as we walked down into town, he was there waving across at us as if he'd known us all his life, and I was waving back at him. And he shared his own personal story. Not that we asked. We went across and said that we'd found the dentist, and he was a great guy. And uh, he was sharing his own broken... We never asked a thing of this guy. And it turned out that his anxiety... He'd suffered 20 years with anxiety and panic attacks. He'd even gone and paid private to America to see some guy. I don't know who he would have been. And I said, did it heal you? He said, no. And he said, I'd do anything I would to be free. And I thought, right. <laughs> and we, there was all these people walking up and down. And I thought, now's the opportunity. So I said, do you know what, Peter? Because he'd asked our names and we asked his the night before. I said, do you know what, Peter? I said, have you tried any alternatives? Oh, I've tried that stuff with the, the stones and I've tried the, this. And I said, maybe you've never tried this the Lord Jesus Christ. I think he nearly killed over on the corner. And he says, what do you mean by that? So I shared the gospel with him. And I shared that, you know, Christ can set you free. And he says, you really believe that? I said, I don't just believe it, I know it. I said, but more important than that, if you died tonight, Peter, you killed over here giving these leaflets out, where would you go? And he says, well, of course, I'd go to heaven. I'm a good bloke. I said, well, I'm sorry to have to tell you, you wouldn't. And he went, what do you mean I wouldn't? <laughs> Are you saying I'm not a good bloke? I said, oh, I'm sure you're a great bloke. I said, and I, sh I just shared the gospel with him. Oh, and the night before that, we went down, and he wasn't there. And then I thought, maybe no. And then as I was in this, that was after that night, when I was in the shower, the Lord said, tonight, tell him the gospel. And I said to Steve, if he's there tonight, I'm going to share the gospel with him. And sure enough, he was there across the road. And he just opened his heart up to the Lord. And I gave him a few different scriptures to read on. And I gave him a little book, the booklet, but also saying about, you know, we gave him our email address. And I thank God that all the razzmatazz that was going on, that Pete, the joy, it isn't about me, but you know when you're doing what God's called you to do, there's no effort. There's no effort, and it gives you unspeakable joy. Yeah. So I really praise God that it's the only reason. We had a great time and over at Lanzarote. But do you know what? More important than that, I to told him about it was all these people. And he was saying, what's the world coming to? And we shared about light and dark with him. And he was just hugging me. And I was praying in tongues over him. And uh, Steve was encouraging me as well. And he said, I've never met any people like you. And I said, if we never meet again, Peter, we're going to meet in heaven. I says, and God can set you free of this depression, this anxiety. He'd spent a fortune on private people, even going as far as to America. I thank God. Just one other tiny one, one second. So a dear friend of ours, the pastors from Bloxwich, the wife ended up in hospital last week. So I asked uh, Petras, would you mind if I go and visit Evelyn in hospital? Please pray for her, the dear friends of ours. He said, no, Lizzie. So I went on my day off on Thursday. I'd made a decision. I was going down to the manor hospital and uh, to see her. There was these six women in the bay. And I don't know whether you've ever felt this. You know how Jesus was moved with compassion. And obviously, you know, I was a nurse and a midwife for many, many years. But I went in as the evangelist into this ward. And I walked in, and there was these people. And I looked around, and my heart was overcome with compassion for these poor people. And all I kept thinking was, what hope is there without Christ? You know, they're obviously very medically ill people. It was a diabetic ward. 
and obviously a medical ward. Anyway, the lady in the next bed, she, get, she looked at me and she said, have you got my handbag? Do you know where my handbag is? I says, no, darling, I don't know where your handbag is. I said, but when one of the girls comes in, I'll ask them for you. So I recognised the Belfast accent. So I turned to her and I said, are you? I looked at her name, Jean. I said, Jean, are you from Belfast? She says, I am, dear. And I was a nurse. And I says, and I was. I thought, Lord, is this another opportunity? So anyway, I said, perhaps the girls know where your handbag is. So she was asking, who are these people here? And I said, oh, they're friends of mine. And I thought, you know, I looked across. And it was amazing how all these people, they were drawn, I know they were drawn to Christ in us. And I says to her, I said, she said she was from Belfast. And I says, about the gospel. And she said, oh, she said, I wouldn't like to assume I was going to heaven. And you could tell she was a really old, poorly lady. And I said, you can have that assurance today, Jean. And how would I do that, loving in Belfast? I, could, I said, I shared the gospel with her. And she was holding my hand. It was such a tender moment. It was absolutely beautiful. And I said to her about the cross. And, that we, and then, basically, she gave her heart to the Lord. Sin, awesome. Since then, t- the pastor's text me this morning, two other ladies in the bay that we got talking to have also given their heart to the Lord. Wow. Only two to go. <laughs> Thanks, Liz.